We found out today that Michael Bloomberg will not run for president in 2020. We found out that Scott Gottlieb resigned from the FDA, and we found out that Kylie Jenner became the youngest self-made billionaire. Uh, while it was an exciting day for people, less so for stocks. We did close lower across the board, uh, but not by very much at all. In fact, it was just incremental amounts. Uh, we did see some retail stocks popping today with Target and Kohl's releasing earnings. Also had Urban Outfitters coming out after the bell. Uh, but otherwise, pretty boring day. Uh, there was one area of the world that's starting to catch my eye a little bit more, uh, and one specific industry within that country that I wanna discuss for our trade application example. So with that, let's go ahead and get started. Welcome to the Market Outlook video presented by MarketScholars.com. I'm your host, Brandon Van Z. It's March 5th, 2019. First of all, if you are new, welcome aboard. We're thankful to have you in our audience tonight. Remember, you can go to YouTube, click subscribe while you're over there, and then go ahead and sign up for our email distribution list, which you can find in our description area. We're also heavy users of Twitter. And while you're there, kiss a bear, and also click like and retweet whenever you do see these Market Outlook related tweets that we post out there. In addition to that, we also have a presence on Facebook. Go ahead and check us out in the web address embedded in the logo in front of you. All right, let's go ahead and dive into the charts. As you can see, I've got chart 4B pulled up in front of us, and this is gonna show us the four different major US equity indices. And as I mentioned during the intro, uh, it was a quiet day on the market. Remember yesterday I mentioned uh, how these charts will show these labels as either blue or orange at the top of the charts. In this particular case, they're all blue. Remember yesterday was all orange, meaning yesterday was a, a wide range day. We had a big uh, you know, difference between the high of the day and the low of the day. Today was the opposite of that. Today was a very calm, quiet day. And while we did close in the red, uh, it wasn't a skittish day that had a lot of people nervous or anything along those lines. So uh, not a whole lot to report there. I will mention uh, something unique that did happen today that was not in existence yesterday, and that is if you look down below here at the Russell 2000, which is our chart in the lower right hand corner, uh, we do have what's known as a bullish intermediate confirmation signal. Let me right click, go to maximize sell here on the thinkorswim platform. Notice down below we have this green line on the market forecast indicator, uh, which we refer to as the intermediate line. It is in the upper reversal zone right now, uh, note, uh, notating that it is a bullish posture from an intermediate perspective. At the same time, we've got the red line, which is known as the momentum line, in the lower reversal zone on the same day. The combination of those two things does uh, create what's known as a bullish intermediate confirmation signal, and it's kind of a buy the dips mentality. Now, generally speaking, we also like it when you find the blue or near-term line uh, somewhere between 50 and 20 on the same day. We found that that is enough of an exhale where there is further upside uh, price action. So that is a promising sign. Obviously, it's not the end-all be-all. I also mentioned yesterday how we've been kind of struggling through these bearish near-term divergences. So who knows? Maybe uh, we've had enough time kind of going sideways and down a little where uh, we're about ready to, to make a little spark higher here uh, again. So we'll keep our eye on that story. Unfortunately, that's the only chart where that uh, does show up. Remember, a lot of times uh, these indices are highly correlated to one another, and so you'll see a lot of the same signals across the board, and that probably uh, emboldens traders even further based off of the theory of that signal. But in this particular case, you will notice that it's the Russell 2000 that is all by itself on that uh, account when it comes to uh, the bullish intermediate confirmation signal. So not a whole lot to report here. Uh, the intermediate postures remain bullish across all of these different uh, markets, uh, just like they have been for basically the entire year of 2019 at this point. Uh, but a couple of these charts, in particular the Dow Jones right here, and also the, or the, the Russell 2000, notice that those green lines are getting awfully close to the uh, to exiting down below the upper reversal zone. Remember that is at 80 on the market forecast in particular. So uh, right now we're at 85 on the Russell 2000 and at 84 on the Dow Jones. So getting closer and closer to that uh, exiting that upper reversal zone. Whereas we've got a little bit more leeway uh, over here on the S&P 500, we're at 89 and down below here on the NASDAQ composite, we're at 92. So we'll keep our eye on that. Uh, if we do continue 
to have some uh, bearishness uh, in future days, uh, and, and we have you know more sell-off days than, than, than buying days in the, in the future, we probably will see uh, our posture finally go to bearish. And I say finally because for the Russell 2000, uh, we received a bullish posture on January 2nd. And, and so that's a, a really long move extended move there uh, all uh, for one single posture. A lot of times you see the posture kind of flip back and forth a little bit more regularly, but in this case, it's been two full months and we've been in the bullish posture the entire time. Let's go ahead and take a look at our next chart set up now. And this will be chart 4C, and this will be our three green arrows chart. Uh, not a whole lot to report here other than uh, there, there is something new that, that, that did not exist yesterday when I went through it, which is um, on the Dow Jones and on the Russell 2000, we picked up additional red arrows on the stochastics. Uh, that is not the case over on the S&P 500 and the NASDAQ quite yet. So it's kind of the similar conversation as what I just mentioned a moment ago with the market uh, forecast uh, technical indicator. Uh, the same thing can be said here when you look specifically at the stochastic indicator. Uh, so where where that leaves us uh, from you know uh, three green arrows or three red arrows perspective uh, doesn't really matter in that sense because uh, we continue to have mixed results. In other words, if you look at the background colors of the charts on chart 4C here and you see white like we do currently on all four of these charts, that means that we have a mix of green and red arrows. Uh, and so in two of the charts cases, the Dow Jones and the Russell 2000, we have two red arrows, one green arrow, and the green arrows are on the moving averages. And then if you look on the left-hand side here where we've got the S&P 500 and the NASDAQ, we've got uh, two green arrows and one red arrow. Uh, so it is truly a mixed bag right now. Again, it's just kind of a, a market that's meandering right now. We're not seeing huge surges higher uh, like we did earlier in 2019, but at the same time, we're not seeing huge surges is lower like we did in late 2018 either. This has been more of a, a kind of a sideways move that we've been experiencing here, uh, kind of dealing with uh, S&P 500 at around 2,800. Uh, that level seems to be a bit of a resistance point for the market right now. So uh, we'll see if earnings or perhaps some deal-making news with China or something else uh, will kick us up and over uh, that hurdle. But right now, it does seem to be an area that the market uh, tends to be struggling with. Let's go ahead and take a look at our 1040 crossover method now. And as I uh, mentioned here uh, in the last couple of weeks, uh, we are uh, in more of a bullish mode here according to uh, what we see with the 1040 crossover method. The 1040 crossover method uh, is applying uh, the, the 10 period exponential moving average uh, and the 40 period exponential moving average. And since we're applying this to a three year weekly candle chart, it's basically the 10 week moving average versus the 40 week moving average. And you want the more sensitive of the two uh, to be outperforming. And that is what we're seeing here uh, in 2019. And we've got to the point where that orange line is now crossed up and through uh, the blue line to give us that nice green background color that we see back there. Uh, but keep in mind, not all of the future bullish moves are gonna turn out the way that this one did uh, back here from early 2016 to uh, basically late 2018. That was a brilliant move to the upside for bulls, uh, and I would not anticipate that that will happen each and every time that we get a positive crossover. So keep that in the back of your mind as well. Uh, you know, it's possible that we have a little bit of back and forth between the bulls and the bears here in 2019, where uh, in the end, we don't really gain a whole lot of traction. Uh, and you gotta be careful because these types of crossover systems uh, will chew you up and spit you out uh, if you have a sideways market. Remember, they're meant to do well in a trending market, but if you have a sideways market where you're always reacting to a lagging indicator like a moving average, then oftentimes what happens is you're buying high and you're selling low and you know you do that repeatedly and you end up with some pretty poor performance. So you've got to be careful on that front as well, but it is a good sign in general that stock prices have kind of gotten back on track so far here in 2019 as opposed to what we were dealing with late last year. And we can see that through the lens of the 1040 crossover method itself. Uh, as it stands right now, the Russell 2000 is the only one that has not crossed crossed over bullishly yet, uh, but perhaps that's uh, gonna be in the cards here in the, in the next few weeks. Let's go ahead and take a look at our next chart setup now. Let's go to chart 4E. 
We'll go through more of our traditional 12 grid analysis here tonight since we kind of skipped that last night when we reviewed the yield curve and the ratio chart. So tonight, let's go back to the, uh, the, the, the typical 12 grids here. And as a reminder, when we're looking at this particular uh, chart set up, the green background colors of the charts will signify a bullish posture using the intermediate line on the market forecast. If you have a pink background color, that is a bearish posture using the market forecast. And this first set of 12 grids is our inner market analysis 12 grid, where we can look at things that aren't necessarily related to the stock market, just to kind of wet the palette a little bit. Uh, you can see that the VIX was up today, uh, but not dramatically, only 0.75%. So that's kind of a non-event. Uh, the, the story remains that the VIX remains at uh, multi-month lows or thereabouts, and therefore, uh, Premiums are reasonably cheap right now if you're an options buyer, uh, and uh, that's probably not doing you much in the way of favors if you're an options seller, uh, if you're hoping for juicier premiums. Uh, in terms of the treasury yield, that's been a story that we've been kind of watching here late last week. We had those big three candles to the upside seeing interest rates surging, but you will notice the last two days it's been kind of a what the kids would call a nothing burger, right? Uh, just basically going sideways, not continuing that surge that we had last week. So uh, don't get ahead of yourself on, on that story quite yet, although we do uh, remain with a bullish posture on that particular chart. Uh, if you look at some of these other charts here, uh, because interest rates uh, did not continue to surge, notice that we did have some more positive movements out of some of the more uh, bond-oriented or fixed-income-oriented types of charts out there. Uh, U.S. government bonds did rise today by 0.21% if you're looking at TLT. Uh, foreign bonds rose today as well, 0.15% uh, to the upside. That's actually got a pretty decent little bounce off of a moving average there. So while we do have a bearish posture uh, on the market forecast, the price action is uh, reasonably strong right now with the bounce in the last couple of days on ticker symbol BNDX to signify the foreign bonds. Uh, REITs had a little bit of a bounce back today. You'll notice VNQ over here uh, did finish higher by 0.27% today. Uh, so again, you know, we had some positive price action, not anything dramatic, but then again, keep in mind context, the stock markets were generally down across the board. So, you know, you're looking for where did, where did we find any sort of positive behavior? And it does seem like those more uh, income oriented asset classes uh, did kind of tick up just a little bit there. Uh, you can see down below here that the US dollar uh, has continued continued its upward ascent, we are currently at an important juncture. Uh, reason I say that is we've had this really nice bounce off of this rising moving average like we might have anticipated for the last five days. However, that brings us right back to where the chart failed back here on February 13th and February 14th, right in there. And I'm using UUP as my proxy to determine what's going on with the US dollar. Uh, in this particular case, UUP will have a little bit of resistance in this area, but it's been going up at such a, a strong amount of momentum here, uh, it wouldn't be entirely surprising to see it get up and through that resistance as well. And remember, we've been watching that for the last month and a half or so because we went from being in a downtrend on the US dollar to going back into an uptrend in 2019. We put in this low right here with this final oversold cluster, went up, tested that downtrending moving average, came down like expected, but not as to be expected. We caught a bounce before breaching a new lower low. So right there, you could theoretically say that was a higher low. At that point, it did go up. It tested that area, kind of like where we're at right now. Notice on this candle, we were kind of in that resistance area from a couple of weeks prior to that, and the market could have easily turned it back around, but this chart had other ideas. It kept on going higher and higher, and by the time it topped out up here, we could then theoretically say we had a higher high. So higher low, higher high, we pull back again. Now notice the moving average has turned around and is starting to go up. It started to bounce off that upward trending moving average. And at this point, you could say we have now our third low of importance there. In this case, uh, another higher low. So low number one, low number two, low number three. We've had two higher highs. And so we'll see if we can gun for uh, that third high as well to kind of complete that, uh, that, that set there and kind of equalize things from a higher highs and higher lows perspective. So the dollar remains very strong and that does have 
a little bit of offsetting effects on, you know, things like commodities where we've seen gold start to struggle here in the last two weeks. We've seen the agriculture commodities continue to struggle, whereas crude oil itself has been a bit of a positive surprise where it's kind of trading on its own fundamentals right now as opposed to just reacting to how the U.S. dollar or other currencies are acting. And crude oil has remained up here near three-month highs and remains above that rising moving average with a bullish uh, intermediate term posture. So that's been a, a pleasant surprise for those of you that might be bullish in the energy markets. Let's go ahead and take a look at our next 12 grid. In this case, it's the chart 4F, which are the foreign stock markets 12 grids. And as you can see here, it's a bit more of a mixed bag where we've got a healthy amount of pink and green charts. Uh, and <clears throat> the one that I wanted to focus on a little bit more tonight because it will uh, affect our, our thinking when it comes to our trade application example later in the video is up here with China. This has really been impressing me here recently. If you look at FXI as your proxy to kind of get a sense of how Chinese stocks in general are doing, we've been in a really nice upward ascent since the beginning of the year. Now you will notice late 2018, we did have that oversold cluster signal there on Christmas Eve and then we kind of spent the next week or so going sideways we put on a slightly lower low there on January 3rd but since that point we had that gap up that very next day and we've been off to the races since then uh, on China so China has been a very strong chart um, not only that but the returns have been exceptional notice that we're up about 8.5 percent on FXI over the last three months. And if you compare that to all the other charts on the board, the only other one that is close to it is Brazil, which is up 8.24% over that same time period. However, when you look at the recent price action in Brazil and compare it to what's going on with China, it does appear that China uh, is playing kind of uh, the, the, the stronger uh, part right now. Uh, Brazil is more uh, meandering sideways after a huge surge at the beginning of the year. So um, it seems like that momentum is drifting over to Chinese securities right now. And we're going to review that topic a little bit more when we get into that uh, trade application example here in just a little bit. Uh, in terms of other charts, you know, one of the things that I've been mentioning here recently is that Mexico uh, is becoming a little bit more of a concern. Notice that Mexico is now down one, two, two, three, four, five, six, six or seven straight days to the downside in Mexico. Now we're in this kind of period right here, or this area, I should say, where we could catch a little bit of horizontal support. Notice that we had this two candle formation on uh, February 13th and 14th there, uh, and perhaps uh, Mexico in, in terms of EWW, which we use as our proxy for Mexican stocks, uh, can catch a little bit of a bid right there. So maybe that's one last hope. But even if that is the case, keep in mind that we're in a different scenario now. Back here when it breached that moving average, the moving average was still largely going up or perhaps going sideways. At this point, we now have a downtrending moving average, so the fear would be even if we do get a, at a bounce there on EWW in the next couple of days and it decides to go a little bit higher, that perhaps that moving average would then be used as a resistance area, kind of like it was back here, and there wouldn't be a whole lot of upside potential there uh, in terms of the momentum that's currently uh, involved in the Mexican uh, securities. And so uh, that seems to be an area of weakness uh, right now that you'd want to be maybe a little bit more hesitant towards. All right, let's go ahead and take a look now at our 12 grid that represents the U.S. sectors, and that's chart 4G here for those of you that are premium market scholars that want to follow along at home with your own charting package. Now, as we look at this, Things look a little bit more promising here compared to what we saw with the foreign markets because in the case of the United States, we only have two pink charts on the board. We've got uh, the materials, which is kind of here in the middle, and then we've got healthcare in the lower left-hand corner. Healthcare uh, has been interesting because we've seen it kind of go back and forth depending upon the day. Uh, I mentioned in the intro, uh, we had some somewhat surprising news. It was surprising to me, I, I'll, I'll say that, when I saw the little blurb uh, breaking across the, the bottom of the scroll on business television that said uh, that Scott Gottlieb uh, was retiring from the FDA. That's a role that he had been in for less than two years. And it seemed awfully suspicious considering he was just on CNBC this morning uh, talking about how you know he wanted to uh, start investigating whether Walgreens was selling you know uh, cigarettes to, to, to minors. Uh, and so it's just very 
odd and suspicious that, you know, he's on business television, has this platform where he's talking for about 10 minutes um, and doesn't mention the fact that he's going to be resigning later on that day. So uh, I'll be very curious to see uh, what more develops of that particular story there. But kind of the, the storyline behind him is he was very tough on tobacco companies, but he was quite friendly to biotech and other pharmaceutical companies. And so we did have a little bit of a pullback uh, today in some of those names that uh, perhaps would be negatively affected by him leaving because the fear is the fear of the unknown. Now, who knows, maybe whoever replaces him will be even more friendly uh, to the pharmaceutical and biotech industries. Uh, but there's always that possibility that it goes the opposite way and whoever replaces him uh, will really start drilling down and um, you know making uh, their lives more difficult than they would want. So we'll have to keep our eye on that story, but it is true that right now healthcare uh, did slip into that bearish posture according to the market forecast because the intermediate line is at 77.85 and falling at this point. Now notice that price action is still above a rising moving average, so I don't think all is lost quite yet, uh, but it is certainly significant enough considering both the news story and the posture change that we'll want to kind of watch this one a little bit uh, more closely going forward. Otherwise, you can see that most of the charts are holding up reasonably well. Uh, I mentioned real estate stocks were up today, so that is showing through here with XLRE uh, as well. And then we had communication stocks uh, that were up 0.6 uh, 3% today. That happened to be the, the sector of focus in my uh, dividend growth investing class that I taught earlier today. So for those of you that are premium uh, market scholars, uh, that uh, recording has now been posted and you're welcome to go uh, get my thoughts on the communication sector and some uh, stocks of interest in that sector from a dividend growth investing perspective here currently. Uh, before we get into our trade application, just want to spend a quick second here to remind you guys that you can watch these Market Outlook videos directly on our blog. Uh, you can just click on uh, blog up here in our upper menu item when you go to uh, marketscholars.com. And uh, we try to make it nice and easy for you to engage with us on social media as well uh, by giving you the direct links to the uh, tweets where we post these videos. Uh, and you can see the, the one for Twitter right directly down below and to the left of where you would be watching this on our website. And the one for our Facebook post would be over here with that thumbs up. So we really appreciate you guys that go out of your way to click like and thumbs up because it gives us incentive to continue to do these videos on a complimentary basis for you guys uh, going forward. As I've mentioned before, uh, it does take a lot of time and energy and uh, everything that goes into the, the research and the production uh, and the editing and the rendering and the sending out of no notifications. When it's all said and done, the whole process takes about two to two and a half hours. And so, as you can imagine, that's a pretty sizable chunk out of David and I's day uh, to be dedicating to a, a, a free complimentary video. So we wanna make sure that if we are going to dedicate this time to you guys, that it's worthwhile. The way you can let us know that it's worthwhile is by clicking on like over here on Twitter uh, or click the thumbs up on Facebook. Thank you in advance for all of you that continue to do that for us. Uh, also, David should be back from his uh, vacation tomorrow. I do see that he has his uh, options inventory trading class scheduled for tomorrow at 11 a.m. Eastern time for those of you that are premium market scholars students. And then I have my strategy lab class where we practice short-term swing trading tomorrow at 2 p.m. Eastern time. So we'll look forward to seeing you in our premium classes tomorrow. All right, let's get back into the paper money platform now and talk about our trade application example. I'm going to pull up uh, let's go to a chart for a just a, a market forecast one grid, but I'm going to do something a little bit different here because I want to uh, show you a longer term view. This is by default a three month chart here, but I want to go back and let's look at a kind of a five year weekly candle chart instead. Um, and this will kind of give us a, a broader insight as to what's been taking place. Now, I mentioned before Chinese stocks have really been kind of perking up here uh, recently. And uh, the way that we use Chinese stocks in this official video is kind of looking at FXI. Now, there's a whole bunch of ETFs that can track China, and some of them are going to be specific to you know China domestic. Some of them are going to include Hong Kong stocks, et cetera. But FXI is a, generally a pretty good proxy because it is one of the more liquid ways to kind of approach Chinese and Hong Kong. Kong, uh, types of stocks. And so this kind of gives you a sense of what's been going on uh, in China over the last five years. A whole lot of nothing. You know, there is definitely price movement where we've gone up 
to this uh, high peak here in uh, May of 2015, but then a really disastrous result immediately after that as we went all the way down here to 28 bucks in February of 2016. Uh, and then the roller coaster started again and we went all the way back up. In fact, we breached this prior level just barely on one candle right there in January of 2018 only to fall dramatically again. And now you can see we're starting to get into that recovery zone uh, again here uh, from FXI's perspective. And you know, a big chunk of this is what's been going on in the last three months uh, that we looked at a moment ago when I was showing you the 12 grid. Well, specifically within China, there was a couple things that caught my eye today, uh, in particular due to some earnings announcements. And so I wanted to show you that uh, one of the stocks, and I've actually used this company's services when my brother and I uh, were traveling in China for about a month way back in, I think it was 2007, late 2007. Uh, we actually paid money to this company, ctrip.com. Uh, and so I kind of, you know, uh, keep my eye on it just from uh, a curiosity sake more than anything. Uh, and it's kind of been volatile all over the board as well. Think of this company as kind of like the, the price line of China. You book your airfare and train tickets and hotels and different things like that on this particular company. Well, you can see that today was quite the monumental day. Uh, this stock was up nearly 20% today alone. And it was just because they came out with an awfully good earnings announcement. And you can see that that candle right there just surging higher after having a really ugly 2018, right? This this thing started 2018 being about a $47 stock, came all the way down here to, to about 25. So that's nearly a 50% decline uh, at one point. In fact, it was. Just notice right now that in June, it was above 50 for a brief period and went down to 25. So a 50% haircut from high to low at one point on C-Trip. Uh, so while today's 20% is impressive, we have to remind ourselves of context there as well. This stock has fallen a lot, and so uh, it's got a lot more maybe upside potential on that dead cat bounce as well. But they weren't alone. Uh, also, uh, over in China today, we saw that ticker symbol YY had a quite uh, dramatic day. It was up 13% on its earnings announcement. And you can see over the last five years, this thing had been kind of in a downtrend for the first, let's call it three and a half years, and then went on this incredible run to the upside uh, and uh, eventually topped out at 142, having an, another very ugly 2018, similar to C-Trip, uh, and then has been kind of in this recovery zone here off to the right-hand part of the chart there. But you can start to see, you know, why somebody might be interested in some of these charts because, you know, it, the, the market has shown a willingness to price these or value these companies at much pr higher levels. And, you know, if you're looking at the United States stock market, you're typically not finding charts that look like this because, you know, we're awfully close to all-time highs in the United States. And so maybe we don't have quite as many of these types of situations, at least in the internet space like we are seeing here uh, in China. A few other stocks that are internet based in China, uh, ticker symbol IQ uh, is also on kind of the upswing and the recovery zone off to the right hand side here. Uh, we also have found that uh, BABA uh, has been in that upswing mode here. That's Alibaba there, of course, a big competitor to uh, Amazon. And then we also have uh, Tencent, which we don't talk a lot about here because it's not uh, a very liquid ADR, uh, but nonetheless, it is one of the world's largest companies, uh, and it is another one of those uh, internet-based Chinese uh, companies. And you can see that recovery zone that's taking place over here. And so I wanted to see if there was a way that we could take advantage of this theme, knowing that this is affecting a lot of these Chinese internet players, not just one. Of course, when you get into just one Chinese stock, you're going to take on a bit more risk. Now, you take risk anywhere in the world, but in particular, you know, if you're headquartered in the United States as an investor uh, and you're trying to figure out if one Chinese company is going to be a worthwhile asset, it can be a little bit of a dangerous experiment. We did see uh, several years ago, I think maybe 2010, 2011 time period, uh, there were a lot of reverse uh, mergers that were created where a lot of uh, Chinese stocks ended up being just smoke and mirrors. And so you always have that kind of nervous feeling when dealing with the unknown. But the good news in this particular case is that there is a ticker symbol. There's a couple of them, but this is one uh, that has maybe a little bit longer history, ticker symbol KWEB. And this is uh, Crane Shares China Internet ETF. And you can see that the chart looks somewhat similar to those individual securities that I just rolled through because we're now going into this kind of recovery period off to the right-hand side of the chart here, whereas we had a really ugly 
2018 from high to low where this thing fell from 68.39 all the way down here to a low of right around uh, 36. And so we're now in that recovery mode where there could very well be some upside potential if we continue to see this theme of China in general and Chinese internet specifically uh, do as well as it has in the first three months of 2019. So the way that I thought we would handle this today is not by playing it through the options market because these are not gonna be overly liquid uh, option uh, securities here. So we'll just go out and buy some shares of this in the hopes that this theme continues to uh, get more robust as the weeks and months roll on. And kind of what I'm targeting in this particular case is buying the stock right around where it closed here. It closed at 48. Uh, 0.41. Now remember, we're after hours right now and the stock market can gap up or down by the next morning. And so I usually like to give myself a little bit of leeway here when entering in these orders. So I'll be willing to buy it all the way up to $48.49. So we'll give it maybe eight cents of kind of wiggle room on tomorrow morning's open. Um, and we're gonna target our stop loss as down here below this low. In other words, if we buy this now, where are we gonna be proven that the thesis is wrong? Well, if we cross this candle right back here at the end of 2018, uh, it will have proven to us that our thesis is wrong. On the other hand, if this thing does continue to go up, it's got some you know, strong percentage possibilities to the upside uh, as well if it can just get back to some of these areas that it was trading in 2018, in the early part of 2018. So if I get my calculator out here, I'll show you what I'm looking at. If we take $48, and 49 cents and and that's where i'm willing to buy it so again i'm giving myself eight cents of wiggle room from where we closed tonight uh, and i subtract out in this case i'm going to put my stop loss at 35 dollars and 99 cents which is just a couple of pennies below the low of this candle that i'm pointing at here the last week of uh 2018. And so uh, when I subtract those two numbers from one another, that means I have $12.50 per share of risk to the downside. In order to maintain my one for one risk to reward ratio, I'm going to take that $12.50 and add it back to the price that I anticipate buying this at, which is $48.50 and 49 cents, and that can generate what our break, or not our break even, but our upside target uh, will be in this particular case, which would be $60.99. Now you can see $60.99 is somewhere kind of up in this vicinity up here. In other words, if it can prove to us that it can get uh, to where it was trading regularly between this candle here in November of 2017 all the way through this candle in June of 2018, then we'll be able to pull our trade off at a profit. On the other hand, if it rolls over and China you know, has a bad trade deal with the United States or something else comes out of the blue and knocks this trade idea down, then it will eventually stop us out down below here uh, as well. So in order to place that trade, I'm basically gonna come right over here to the chart and just simply right click on the chart and I'm going to go to buy custom with OCO bracket. Then down below here, you can see that it, it will allow you to change your quantity. And obviously we can't talk to each one of you as individuals. So I just generally leave this as the default 100 shares. But of course, you're going to want to adjust accordingly to however much risk you're willing to take with these various trade ideas in your own paper money account. Uh, but here in the top line where it says 4858, and your number might be different because that depends upon where you clicked on the chart. But in this particular case, I mentioned before that I'd be willing to buy this all the way up to $48.49 uh, tomorrow. And so it says limit right here, which I will leave. Uh, I'll go ahead and change this to a good till cancel order in this case uh, on the top line. On the second line, or the first one in pink, that's our upside price target. And in that case, I'm going to type in $60.99 to maintain our one-for-one -one risk reward ratio like I mentioned a moment ago. And I am also gonna leave that as a limit order on that second line there. And then I'm gonna change that from day to good till cancel there in the pink as well. Now in the line directly below it where it says day, that's now associated with the stop itself. I also wanna change that to good till cancel. So you can see in this particular case, I got GTC across the board. One final step is going to that bottom line right there that has a random number in its stop price. That allows you to change it to your specific stop price. In this case, I'm going to $35.99, which is just a hair below the low of where it traded uh, late last year. 
Otherwise, that looks good. So I'm going to go ahead and click confirm and send. We'll review it one last time here. Uh, everything does uh, look peachy. So we'll go ahead, uh, send that one in and see if that theme of China internet uh, can continue uh, to produce profits for potential investors and traders out there. All right, well, I wanna thank you for joining me here tonight. Again, hopefully, as long as David's travel plans are going smoothly, uh, you should anticipate to see him back at the video tomorrow. Uh, it's been fun to get a chance to work with you a little bit more often than I normally do here for the last week. So thanks for uh, being patient with me and checking out the videos along the way. Remember, if you get value out of these, make sure you click like and retweet and all that fun stuff there. Uh, but otherwise, uh, we'll continue to watch these markets and come to you daily uh, with our insights. And uh, we, we thank you for your viewership. So with that, all the best of success with your trades and your investments. Goodbye for now.